Shalom and welcome to another edition of our Daily Bread. I am Messianic Torah. And this week's parashat is the first parashat of the book of Vayikra, also called Leviticus. And it's called uh, Vayikra, which means any called. And this Torah portion um, starts in Leviticus 1, 1, 3, 6, 7, and half Torah in Isaiah 43, 21 through 44, 23. And this is just a summary message um, uh, about the full message. If you want the full one-hour message, the link is um, below in the section. And this is just a 10-minute summary for those people who uh, just want to kind of see what it might be about or they don't have a lot of time or whatnot. Um, so we'll just uh, zoom through it. So anyway, my message for 2014-15 for Parashat Baikra is called Knowing What You Are Doing. And what I talk about in this message is the first thing I talk about is this concept of Vayikra. And, you know, it's Annie called. And in verse 1, Leviticus 1 1, he calls to Moshe. And then he speaks to Moshe. And then he tells Moshe to speak to the children. So what this is establishing is that there's layers, right? Yodewahe is the truth, the message is the truth. Okay, he then gives the message to Moshe. Moshe then is a filter and uh, and a facilitator who then speaks to the children of Israel. And in the message, I compare this to the Word of God, that the written word, just like many of the parables, they're a messenger. They have a message within them. The Torah, the Bible, has messages of truth within it. Just because you read it doesn't mean you understand the truth or that you found the truth. Um, even though the statements may be true, to understand the actual truth, you have to dig deeper, and you have to study them and understand them. Because there's many people, people who are totally ignorant, that can misuse and misquote the Bible um, and not understand it. The Bible itself, just because they have it, or they can quote it doesn't mean they at all understand what the truth is within it. And so we have to study. You know, these I, I talk about how God when he talks to us, whether it's through prophets or in the scriptures where he actually is being saying something, he's not just speaking for nothing. It's always instruction. And that's what Torah means is instruction. And so and so we see this even here in this concept of the laws of offering we see that he's got the laws of the burnt offering and the peace offering and the minka and all these different things. And there's details. Everything has details and instructions. So just because you want to bring an offering to God, um, he doesn't operate in a way that you can just bring whatever you feel like. That's how people in religion treat God himself. That, well, I have a relationship with God and it's whatever I say it is. And their God... Uh, uh, likes says it's okay to drink alcohol and someone else's version of God says well he doesn't like alcohol and and then someone else's version says well you know I, I you know I love everybody just the way they are and someone else's version of God says no you know only if you're a Jew or uh, you know those are only my people or only if you're this and that everybody has their version, right, of God. And what that equals, I talk about it in this message, is that equals idolatry. You see, when we form God after our ideas, our imagination, that's what an idol worshiper and creator does. They make their own God. And then they worship it. And the difference is, is that we are God's creation. So if we're creating God in our mind and through our interpretations, then we're placing ourselves above God and God, and that's the way idolatry works. Or if you're the creation, then you just seek to understand the creator, but he forms you. So the, if God's changing you in the image that he wants you to be, then you're probably have the right mechanics of following God. If you're changing God to serve you and your desires, 
then you're probably an idol worshiper and you're not worshiping a true God. You're worshiping your imagination. And so we talk a little bit about that. We talk about the sins of ignorance and um, how whether you're ignorant or not, there's still requirements and punishments that come along with that and payments that are due. And there isn't a situation where a person can say, well, I was just, I didn't know. And all of a sudden that's going to just wipe it away and say, well, then you had no accountability. It actually proves how Torah study and Bible study is a requirement because, because you're accountable to God's instructions, whether you know them or not. So you better know them if you're going to be accountable for them because not knowing them does not take away your accountability. Um, and so ultimately that accountability drives you to study because you have to study so that you can know, so that you can do. If you don't have that, you haven't even got to start following God. You haven't even started. And there's a lot of people in that space that haven't even started. They've been following God, you know, because someone on, met them on the bus, uh, you know, uh, some Christian telling them about Jesus died for your sins, and they think that was all that was required. I said that little sinner's prayer, and I have no real requirements after that. Everything's optional. And I'm somehow, you know, good with God. And, you know, that just isn't going to fly. And, 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 and believing that and then saying, well, I didn't know, isn't going to fly either. Because if you love God and you, you want to, it's just like Messiah says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Well, if you don't know what those commandments are, and you say you love him, logically you'd go, well, I want to love him. He's told me that if I love him, I need to keep his commandments. So I guess I better study what his commandments are if I want to say that I love him. Otherwise, I could say what I want. But according to his definition, it's just a lie. It's not true. So that should drive you to Taurus. I always, when I bump into people I haven't seen in a while, friends and stuff like that, generally I, you know, if they're messianic, I ask them the same question. Oh, how's your Bible study? Very few people have a very good answer for that. Very few people go, oh, well, it's interesting. I was studying this out, and what do you think about that? Usually it's just like, oh, yeah, uh, it's going okay, you know. Uh, or uh, I've been pretty busy this week, or, you know, nothing new. Well, what are you doing with your time there, buddy? I mean, you're not going to live forever. The harvest is going to come. The reapers, the angels, are going to come. There's going to be a time of accountability. And you're not working in the field when you need to so that you can survive and have a crop when the harvest comes. So everybody's accountable. And being ignorant and lazy is not going to help you. Um, next we learn in this... Torah I cover touching things and how how you have a responsibility for touching unclean things that make you unclean. It's the unknown. You don't know that somebody's unclean. When you touch them, they might pass that uncleanness on to you. Um, you're still responsible. So if that's the case, again, it drives you back to, well, then I would want to know so that I cannot do that if you care about those things. Otherwise you can say, oh, well, I don't want to know and I guess I'm accountable and I don't care. Well, then that's true. You don't care. If you care, you'll know. Uh, and then we talk about doing, considering what you're doing with God. Just like the half Torah talks about the idols and that they, you just burnt and baked your bread with that tree that you cut that wood from to bake your bread. And then you turn around and made an idol of it and you're worshiping it like it's God. I mean, can you not see that that tree is just a piece of wood. That a minute ago you were warming yourself by the fire with it, and now you're calling it a god. I mean, that's not even logical. But people don't pay attention. They don't know what they're doing. And what we really learned this year from this parasha is that we need to know what we're doing and look at the patterns and say, does it line up with what we're supposed to be doing? Does it line up with the patterns of the Torah? Does it line up with what I'm supposed to be doing? I hope this is a blessing. Hit subscribe if you want to hear the whole message. Check out the full one-hour message. I get into detail. 
and uh, leave a comment and share. And until next time, I'm going to say shalom.